welcome. Thank you for uh, thank you for taking this time this morning with me. I am uh, I am most grateful, and uh, I like to think that anybody who who you know views a, an excerpt or all of our conversation will feel similarly grateful. Mm -hmm. Thank you too, Murray. Glad to be here. You and I have um, have engaged at various points over your experience. I think I've probably known you a good decade or so by now, um, which has been my privilege and, and my pleasure. And so there has been a different junctures, different changes of significance, and there's been different transitions of significance as you have, in my observation of you, you've come into ever higher elevations of the wonder of who you are. And uh, so, We'll get a little uh, um, a cameo of that today during our conversation, which uh, which I'm I'm very much looking forward to. So again, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So so perhaps as a starting point, um, anything by way of an introduction to who you are would be wonderful. Uh, a, a moment or two about uh, anything that you would like to share with us as far as who you are uh, would be great. Sure, yes, yes. Well, again, I'm very happy to, to be here and talk with you, Murray. Um, we do have a long, uh, we've, we've done a, a lot through the years, well, a long history, yes. yes. And uh, well, I, I am a veterinarian. I started off as a veterinarian in practice and uh, went back to school and um, got my degree in social work, which was an unusual combination. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, you know, with these two different professions, I really wanted to figure out a way to somehow merge them. So I went back to school again and got a PhD looking at the social aspects of uh, uh, the kinds of things that uh, happen within practice, within uh, the service uh, of veterinary medicine and how clients experience experience uh, the service that they get and how veterinarians deliver that service. So looking at the human side of things. And then from there, when I graduated from um, university, that's that was the, the bridge point where I first we first met, where I was introduced to you uh, by a friend. Uh, so I've got a varied background. And, uh, and from this point forward, I've, I've really been uh, within education more so than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I often joke with you that you have more initials behind your name than I have in my entire name, and I don't have a short name. <laughs> oh I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I completely respect all that you have accomplished, you know, both professionally and, and academically, and it's a, it's a testament to who you are as a lifelong learner. You exemplify, mm -hmm. you know, all that you bring. And uh, so I often think that, uh, you know, I'm getting way more out of our partnership over time. <laughs> Just being able to be uh, be uh, close to your, your different chapters of your story. So if you will, if you would, Debbie, um, you know, I've, I've taken over the last year or two to looking at all the the different individuals and organizations that I've worked with and what is common about all of our starts is that there is significant, there's change of significance going on. There is challenge of significance going on. There of course is opportunity of significance going on. Um, there, are, there are choices of significance going on um, across every, individual or organizational circumstance that that's that's certainly common something has catalyzed um our our uh, initial chat and then our engagement and i would i'm wondering is it is it i mean given we've had multiple trans changes and transitions together is it is it fair to ask um if you could comment on you know maybe generally speaking what was what was happening even before you reached out to me or engaged with me, would you say? You know, what is, I think it's interesting for people to know at that threshold, what is it that gives cause to opening up to bringing an outsider onto the inside? 
which I which I feel is a significant choice in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like the way you phrase that bringing an outsider onto the inside because I had uh, you know I had spent years in practice so I had never I wasn't looking for jobs or anything like that I wasn't ever at a point where I was at a career change or transition so I had never thought of uh, having a career coach you know it, it never occurred to me and um, and then by my friend introducing uh, you to me and thinking about it and being in that position of transition where I really felt uh, very lost because I had been in my own practice for years. I'd never looked for a job and uh, I'd never engaged in, in doing anything, any, in anything that was different. And so I really reached that point where I recognized that bringing someone in on the inside was was exactly what I needed, and but I'd never done it before. I didn't know what to expect, and uh, but it was just I think enough of all the pieces in the places that they were. When you think of a puzzle, that this just seemed to be the right piece to put into place, yeah. and uh, yeah, and I'm so glad I I reached out. Well, yeah, appreciate appreciate you sharing that. And, and so, as you mentioned a little bit earlier on, a friend of yours uh, recommended you have a chat with me. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's the there's always that initial touch point, or two, or few, as the case may be, when uh, you and me, and, or a, another and me, or an organization, and you're just getting to know each other. It's, 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 you know, building, building a little bit of rapport um, before a decision is made either way as to whether or not to engage. Could, could you, could you take us back perhaps to, so there's this point where we're open and we have arrived at a place where we believe that outside support is, uh, is relevant and, and uh, important. What had you decide decide to engage with me back then, or you know, as the case may be, as we go? Uh, I think that's interesting for people to to know about as well. One thing to welcome someone in, it's another thing to say, okay, I've decided that I'm going to engage Murray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it um, it really was a sense that uh, I needed. To the expertise to perhaps, uh, you know, reflect with. So I, I knew which goals I had as far as my career went, where I wanted to go. Um, but I think within that, there is there is that sense of uh, aloneness and not necessarily having the that other person that you can reflect with that can then bounce things across across to you and and as they do that it makes you think deeper and so I think it was it was basically recognizing that this was such an important time and I wanted to be able to you know direct the course uh, of my career uh, to the best that I possibly could and and sense that if I had someone to reflect with and to challenge my thinking and uh, and to possibly even, you know, open my mind to, to look at things in new ways or different ways or uh, to consider different things, which I wouldn't consider otherwise because again, I wasn't, I, I wasn't out there uh, for years looking for a position and knowing how to uh, to really uh, manage that that entire uh, experience uh, I think that was really the the key points that that I felt that would be really helpful that would mm -hmm. be um, you know the tipping point that you know to have that expertise and to be able to reflect with someone would be so important and and it was it it it, it definitely made a huge difference uh, i 
you really speak to the essence of it when you talk about reflection and being able mm. to reflect with another. When I think of all of those years come decades that I have to uncomfortably acknowledge, uh, I decided I was going to uh, go it alone and I was going to, uh, well, I can reflect. I mean, I'm a reflective person. I can reflect. I can reflect till the cows come home. I can, I can reflect on my own. Um, I, I've got this. I've got this. Yeah. And uh, oh my goodness, how I, how I spun my wheels on the same spot for a very, very long time because I could not, well, I could not see what I could not see because I didn't have any perspective on me. And so it's insightful for you to share that, that reflective part that is, is critical for us to open up, but to do it collaboratively uh, offers different kinds of access points. So Debbie, way back when, when you first met me, I mean, this is really unfair because quite a bit of time has passed by, but could you comment on, you know, what is it that, what is it about our initial conversations that had you say, you know what, um, I'm, I'm going to try this out with this guy. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier the rapport, right? I mean, that's absolutely foundational, right? Uh, within any relationship, uh, you know, trust has to be there. And uh, trust comes through the development of rapport. So I know we had had, I think, two or three conversations leading up to it so I could, you know, understand what, the kinds of things that you could offer or that, you know, the, the ways in which you could be of support. And, uh, and then at the same time, you were learning about me, you know, where I was at and where I was aiming to go. And, um, and so, you know, developing that rapport, um, that absolutely, uh, you know, that, that gives you that comfort, that gives you that trust. And it, and it was also the sense that I, I felt in you, that again, you were getting to know me, so like you had that interest, that you knew who I was, you showed that interest. Um, but it was, it was also um, that sense that, um, oh, how can I phrase it? Um, you had a sense of goodwill. It wasn't just getting to know me, but you had a sense of goodwill. You, 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 you expressed a sense of uh, belief in me, confidence in me. Um, you could see sort of what you could perhaps call the, the gifts that I could offer uh, and saw that potential. And I think that too, uh, bringing someone on board uh, with that it is key as well. You know, that this person who you're bringing on board as your coach, they see you, they get you, um, they believe in you. And, um, and they see the possibilities, you know, and, and, and are willing to go on to that, that path with you. So, so it was all of those, those things together. And thank you, Debbie. And, and you've come back at different other junctures, uh, similarly. Um, what, what promotes a return? You know, I, I, I joke with a, another individual that I was in this conversation with this is, okay, well, okay, well, what was missing or lacking in the earlier time together for you to have to keep coming back? <laughs> Which, of course, is not the essence of this, that there's, you know, life has changed and change is life. And there's always a new threshold to a new transition and a new elevation of who we are. But I'd be really interested in maybe just a moment on that is... What gives cause to someone returning? Yeah, yeah, well, that's a good question because, um, and again, this, 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 I mean, just stepping one step back, uh, you know, just because you are so genuine and you have that interest and commitment to people, um, you know, we had kept in contact periodically through the years and, and, you know, in, in all of this, and again, you know, you mentioned, you know, that there's always change and so something new coming up or so whatever. Um, but I think a key thing, you know, that I, I even, you know, believe in obviously, you know, as a social worker is 
um, there is ongoing, you know, there's lifelong learning, there's ongoing personal growth. And so when I came back to you, this was all about, uh, it had nothing to do with, uh, you know, finding a new position or anything. It was all about expanding my understanding of myself in the work that I do, you know, coming from the belief that I want to work from my fullest self, from the wholeness of myself, not just from a professional self, but from the, the fullness of that personal self, you know, built into it. And so that concept of wanting to learn more about myself as this individual carrying themselves in the world, offering something from day to day to that world, contributing to society, and um, and being able to maximize that. Mm -hmm. So coming back to you, this was more so learning about myself um, as that personal, professional person mm -hmm. and, and what I want to carry forward in the world. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Um, lovely. Thank you for sharing that. I, I... As you, as you share this, I remember those different thresholds, those different, you know, new, new beginning points, as I do with all the different people I work with. And though we may be struggling at that time, uh, though we may be even suffering sometimes at that time, um, not, not to necessarily suggest this of you at all, but just in general terms, um, though we may be inspired, um, though we may be excited about the possibilities um, I know I am always very excited about, <laughs> about what lays ahead because I get to play in this sandbox all day, every day. Um, and I can, uh, I believe so much in these, these thresholds of significant change to us and, and what, what lies in the wake and the unfolding of it. And I, and I know it, it kind of goes like a loop to loop and all over the place. It's not an upward linear curve and they're gonna be really tough spots, but, but uh, I, I've got this wiring that I, I get excited about what's possible for people because you know as we just talked about, opening up and bringing someone on the outside of our lives into our lives is a really significant decision and so one doesn't normally do that unless at some level in their being, they believe in their own possibilities, you know? And yes. so that's, uh, that's really neat that you would take me down memory lane in that way, Debbie. Yes, well, well just, just the way you phrase that, that just captures that, you know, that initial experience that I had with you in, the, in that first, you know, two to three conversations or so. That, that it's that it's that energy that uh, backs it up too. And very often when we're in a place where we can feel lost or without direction um, or so, our energy level, you know, it can be way down. <laughs> so even to converse with someone and then, you know, build that connection, you know, one person's energy can lift the other person up to that better place to, you know, carry themselves forward or, or just to feel more comfortable or more confident in the position that they're in, whatever that may be. Yeah, yeah. lovely, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that's a, a wonderful uh, view into sort of the before and then to the point of our engagement. Um, I have a, a twofold question next, and that is, um, I believe that there would be a natural curiosity to want to know, you know, how does Murray work? You know, like, uh, so I've been working with him over a period of time um, in the name of anything related to structure or process or neither. You know, what, what, what is, is this a meandering sort of aimless pathway or is this got, you know, rigid structure or is there some sort of hybrid there? If you could comment on that part, that would be would be helpful, I believe. And then the B part is, I'm sensing I might be spending a bit of time with this guy. What's he like? What could I anticipate? Could you help me to get my sense for what I could expect from this guy? Should I be warned? I mean, should I be, should I be, is there anything to look forward to? I mean, so the A part is more around the process and the structure. And is there any of that? And the B part is, what's it like working with this guy? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So part A. Um, 
Yeah, um, well, we, we have, we've had many conversations and, um, and you know, what I've always appreciated is that you record the conversations. So, uh, because it's one thing to be in the moment with you and have that dialogue and go back and forth and any you know, the conversation goes in this direction, goes in this direction. And in the moment you're following everything and it, uh, you know, it all makes sense. And, and at the same time, it's just like if you were to go to a lecture or whatever, you only remember so much, you know, maybe you walk away with 10 to 20%. So, so I think like one of the, you know, the, the valuable things that you offer is, is the recording of, of our talks where you can, you know, you can listen back and listen to as many times as you want. You can make notes. Sometimes when we talked, uh, you know, you know, you know, by phone as such, uh, I would make notes as well, but you could make deeper notes or reflect on it. So, so I've loved the conversations that we've, we've had. And of course, again, that they were recorded, that you could listen to it time and time again. And it's just like reading a book, you know, you read the book one time, but when you read the book the second time, the third time, there's more and more nuances that show, mm -hmm. show up. And uh, so again, more to reflect on. And um, and I've I've loved the conversations in that they are um, they're so rich, and I found that we've gone to places that I wouldn't have anticipated we would have necessarily been talking about, or you know I I see something this way. And then through the conversation, this way kind of has shifted this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, and it's and it's over here, or it's up here, or so, and and it's been this rounding off or 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 shifting, and um, and that it gives you much to digest through that. So um, we've also had um, emails go back and forth. Um, you, you send out uh, these, uh, I'm not sure what you call them now, but uh, occasional emails, you know, to, to uh, you know, groups of us as such. And uh, yeah, and I found all of that, uh, all of that exchange process, so to say, um, truly beneficial. Um, within the conversations themselves, you are in the moment and in that flow, um, within that joint energy. But then beyond that, you can do so much more to gain more depth by, by re-listening. And, um, and in some of our latter work um, with coming to know myself more, there's been a lot of journaling that's been a part of it. And, uh, and that journaling part, again, offers opportunities for, for new learnings through reflection and for just bringing bringing up different aspects of your experience uh, to uh, re-look at them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I appreciate you touching on the recordings. Um, important for the listener and the viewer to know that's only by permission. Um, yeah. That's not something that I do uh, without anyone's permission. But it does give this uh, unique opportunity to uh, retrace, you know, by excerpts or by the whole conversation, you know, what we exchange. And as I said, uh, as I often say, maybe always say is what I'm particularly interested in for you is to listen to you, <laughs> your parts of the conversation. It's incredibly revealing when we can kind of float above our own experience and, and, and see our thinking and see our feeling and, uh, and what we glean from that. So that's, uh, in my view, that's one of the most precious aspects of those recordings. Um, it's uh, a lot less about what I might have to contribute and a lot more about what the, what the journey or the fellow journey or has to contribute. Well, might, part, might, yes, please. Might, might I add, um, that's, that's one of the things that I noticed is that, I mean, you really, listen to you really listen to me as such right um uh you didn't just listen for the content which is you know where i'm at this is where i'm sharing my experience but you had that um deeper listening or what you might call um 
generous listening where you you went far below far i don't know below or above the content to really yeah to really get at the like the essence like um where that person is at so you know not just the the intellectual part but more the the emotional part um of where that person is experiencing it and, and i think that's where we when we ourselves are in the experience uh, wherever we are where and again we can be spinning our wheels we can be very much in in the intellectual experience of it you tend to to i don't know get below the surface or rise above it to look is look down on it uh differently picking out what the that person is experiencing at the very human level hmm. and that is key because when you can connect to that as well as the intellectual part of it i think that's where you can really move forward you know that person can really move forward so so i I've, i've noticed that repeatedly how you you don't just listen to the words of what i'm saying but much more deeper to that human experience uh, that that person's experiencing and that's a gift I, i i'm not sure quite how you do that but you you get there <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for seeing me and for, uh, you know, recognizing that in me. I, uh, I think of my yoga instructors who at the end of each class um, express gratitude. You know, thank you for, um, you know, the light in me sees the light in you. Mm-hmm. And there's a, pla- a place of gratitude. So, you know, thank you very much for seeing me and for being able to you know, articulate that aspect, which um, can be so self-revealing for people uh, during the experience. Right. The, you have you have been a, around Debbie for the evolutions of the work, and uh, and and most recently, you know, the shift in its current form or fashion. And I wonder, just before we move on from sort of the process and structure part of it, um, there's all these sorts of experiences that that I've uh, connivingly uh, you know uh, thought through and decided to offer into the shift experience so for the viewer right now the listener you have a series of you know what in in current day terminology is these mini shifting experiences and then from then there's the so that there's an experience and then there's an opportunity to reflect in the journal and then I meet you in the journal and that in each of the 10 building blocks that evolves to us having a live conversation. And so there's all these different sort of moving parts. Um, You personify the commitment uh, to, you know, getting as much out of all of this. It's like every single morsel Um, you are, you are, (laughs) I, I so appreciate it. And so love that and, and bask in, in the commitment that you make. Could you just touch briefly on this experiential thing that my intention is to create as far as possible a feast for the senses that we can then go into, we can go into the journal and we can reflect what we want to reflect about that. So maybe a comment from you on that would be great. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I, I very much, very, very much appreciated the the hundred day shift because, um, you know, I, I, as you know, I've, I've got a lot of letters behind my name, which means I've got a lot of hours in the classroom, uh, you know, with your traditional teaching and learning, you know, b- basically so, you know, there's always other added experiences too. But this way of learning and thinking with, you know, this smorgasbord of, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, a, it's, I mean, sometimes it's a video, you uh, you know, uh, you know, a talk, or uh, it's a it's a video of a song, or it's a piece of art, or it's a piece of poetry, or it's a, a short excerpt, or it's uh, an article, um, and and then and I think when you engage in all these different forms of media, you know, sight, sound. Uh, the different, you know, they're they're not just meant to be something 
that is a bland fact, 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 but it's a point of view. So therefore you engage in going off in this direction and, and experiencing it this way. Um, all of that, like to me, you know, even as a, an educator, um, I, I, I love that way of learning. I, I absolutely love it. it. It connects you to, to that full, the full sensory you, I think is a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's not just taking intellectual content, but so much of the content has, you know, it has a, a leaning towards it or an emotion built within it. And sometimes, for example, when you, you listen to a song, and then you know you, you're asked to reflect on something in relation to that, and what you you understand or sense from that. It it sets the mood in you for things to come out of you that wouldn't ordinarily, you know, because you're connecting at that deeper level, and so the experience itself and the um, the points of reflection that that come out of that, um, I find like when I'm journaling, things come out of me that I wouldn't ever have thought were in me, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes I look at it and I'm looking at what I'm writing and I'm saying, oh, did I just write that? <laughs> like, I didn't know that was within me as such. So, so I think that level of experience and uh, engagement with the material and the learning that can come from what from it and and uh, and that is uh, is a very unique experience I I've never had it before but the more I experience it the more I sense that that's what we need as human beings is that kind of learning, looking at things from different perspectives, using different forms of media to connect with, to really learn and to really open up your mind to thinking in other ways. So it, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, yeah. Thank you Debbie. I mean, um, you, you describe it all so beautifully as you always do. And uh, it's, it's again, you know, my gratitude for you being able to see into all of that because it's 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 what's intended. It's in my heart that that's where it comes from, and, and to say that these different experiences are not promoting my way of thinking, they're 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 offering something into our experience, our co-creative experience together, and you you decide what it is that's salient. You decide what it is you would like to explore more deeply into the journal. It's not, it's not angling uh, someone in a particular direction. It's, it's freeing you to explore all the am amazing and beautiful dimensions of, of who you are. I, I must, before we move on, I must um, happily and lightheartedly talk about, you know, the hundred day shift, which I have been compelled to sort of reframe as the shift. <laughs> because I, I, back in the beginning, when I first conceived of it, I guess, yeah, yeah, we'll have, you know, a hundred days and there'll be hundred, there'll be hundred experiences, one each day, and that will be explored. And then they'll come through. And then at a hundred days, it'll be nice and neat. And it'll be day one and there'll be day a hundred and consecutive days and 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 it'll have this amazing shifting experience and and oh, oh my goodness like in 100 days like absolutely <laughs> and uh and it's funny you know as an entrepreneur I've, I've certainly learned the lesson where you bring you bring all of what you think and feel you can bring into in, into service and then your customers teach you what they need instead <laughs> <laughs> And so what I've experienced, and particularly with you, because you're so thoughtful and heartfelt in your engagement, is that, you know, there's a, there's a mini shift experience that's offered, and we may need a few days to be with that experience. And we don't need someone saying, well, you know, you should be on the fifth 
mini shift by now, Debbie. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> and, yes. and so uh, the, a big part of being in transition is the, is the coming to terms with letting go. And uh, I found myself, I had to let that go. And, I, and I'm so ha much happier and, and, and feel I'm in a higher level of service when just let that go. And so what is truly this 100 day shift is there are 100 mini shift kinds of experiences to engage with and people, individual journeyers pace this experience as they will over a duration of time. And if that takes a year, then that takes a year. If that takes just 100 days, cool. But it's not for me to just decide, it's for the journeyer to decide. And I think that's really important because we have very busy demanding lives otherwise. And this is designed to be complementary, not an added weight for, you know, to already what can be, you know, tense or, or stressful, you know, experiences. So I... I we we have I mention it because you and I often joke about you know the thousand day shift, <laughs> which just so you know for the viewer and the listener, no, it doesn't take a thousand days. Um, but just to say that uh, we do joke about it and and we let it go and we let it be what it will be and and have it take on the life that it takes on. Yes, yes, exactly. That that's well put. And and sometimes with with some of what you offer, I will like I will read something or listen to something or or so one evening, and then I go, oh okay, so I'm gonna let that sink in. And I come back to it the next evening, and I redo it again. And I'm like, okay, so and then I come back to the third evening, and then. And then I actually start with the journaling because it's in a way it's taking it in and letting it percolate a little bit. And then sort of, and then by the time I actually start journaling, it's like, okay, everything's sort of falling into place with, with, you know, where I'm thinking and, and, and that type of thing. So, so again, it's that, it's that you have that opportunity to have the depth of engagement, it's, you know, where it's not necessarily just a, a one time, oh, let's look at this. Okay, now we've got to write. It's like, let's look at this, take it in. Oh, I'm even going to sleep on this and then and come mm -hmm. back to it or so. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. And, and, you know, just as a footnote, my role is, um, of course, I want, I want my fellow journeyer to have uh, the liberty of, of pacing their their engagement with all of these shifting dynamics over time. And uh, I'm also, you know, I'm a, a bit of a Jiminy Cricket. So if I feel that the rest of someone's life is, is having them stray from, I know the shift that yes. they're committed to, then I'm, I'm also happy to give a little nudge uh, and say, you know, I miss you in your journal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I love that. I've always needed that myself. I've always needed, you know, those who who are genuinely interested in my highest possibilities to remind me that it does it does it does necessitate my engagement. So anyway, we could go on and on about this, but I think that's a, a really rich part for those people who would like to have a better understanding of the the process of the shift. They could go to a particular part of our conversation here and look into that. It gets me thinking that indexing these in some way could be very helpful to people. Um, so then there's this part about, okay, could you, could you help the individual who's considering this get a sense for um, what, what is it like to work with Murray? Because, um, you know, I'm, I'm, it sounds like I'm going to be pretty engaged with this fella. Um, so, you know, whatever you have to offer, you know, I trust in the real and the raw and you'll, you'll give it to us straight, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, well, that is, that's such a big question to ask because like, it's, it's just hard to, it's hard to know where to begin. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's just so hard to know where to begin. Um, Oh, I, I love all the work with you and, and, and what is that all about? Um, you're an extremely 
positive person, um, someone who is a real clear thinker, someone who um, embraces life, love of, of living. Um, you know, it's like you're a person who lives life to the fullest, someone who's really like uh, expresses aliveness, um, you bring in energy coming forward. You are um, authentic. You know the 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 genuineness in you, the the authenticity. Um, you know the the expertise that you bring into the conversation. You know whether that's expertise. You know, let's say understanding. You know. The corporate world or um, expertise in understanding corporate uh, lingo or uh, information about um, you know how you know the mechanics of interviews or you know that technical information or whether that's more expertise about you know the human experience and uh, and you know, understanding the human journey as such, you know, all of these different things you bring to the table, and you know, within all of the exchanges, um, again, it's, it's that positivity, but that seems like such a it doesn't seem to really capture it. Um, so I, that's why I'm sort of struggling because. It's, it's something that, you know, wherever you have a point of contact, uh, you bring in this wholeness that comes into it. So no matter, you know, where I may be, if it's here, 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 or, or way out here, and I'm trying to get centered, <laughs> uh, you know, what I meet with is something which is like, a, is like it's a wholeness, and it's something that... Um, you know, it can even be like a grounding, like something like a groundingness uh, and wholesomeness that uh, that is good to connect with. And it, and it offers in itself grounding in a way, as, as I guess a way you could say it. Um, I also find, you know, my discussions with you um, to be inspiring that that they um they leave me in a better place with a, uh, a stronger sense of myself in, and in the world. And I know that you, you, you always say that that is co-created, Debbie. <laughs> that was not me having this effect on you. This is something that we co-created through our, you know, our connection, our conversation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, it's very hard to wrap words around you, Marie. It's it's because I feel it, and it's all this big sense. And then how to pick out individual words, you know, is as if you know light. There's this light, and then how do you describe each and every color that is a part of you know the rainbow that is built within that light? It's very hard to put into words. Um, but it is something that uh, is distinctly there and it's been there through the years, you know, in any of the times we've connected uh, and, uh, and it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah. So I have, I have so pre appreciated all of it. Well, I, um, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm grateful. Um, I'm present. Uh, to what you're sharing. Um, I, I know, Debbie, that you know, not only uh, are you responding to the facilitator's questions, but you decided to be facilitator there for a moment as well, because I was just about to say, hey, this is all co-created and you, <laughs> you, already, went, you already went there. Um, uh, I so cannot do this alone. Um, whatever the partnership may be, whatever, as I, as I often say, I am a fellow journeyer. Um, I often 
you know, lightheartedly say, if you think that I'm in the promised land and I'm going to now tell you all the steps to get to the promised land, think again. <laughs> and yeah, I, you know, I, I love life and, and, and I love aliveness in all of us. And hey, I have my dark moments too. Um, we should really get my wife and my son on here and they could, they could help illuminate the fact that uh, we each and all have our light and our dark and I have my share too. <laughs> Well, well, that's, you know, that's, that's where the, the authenticity is, because I mean, you've shared aspects of your life story and everything, you know, with, with me as well. And it's, and it's always, you know, there's nothing, I don't know, artificial or hierarchical or, uh, you know, expert driven or anything like that, even when you, you know, share share things again related to the you know let's say the the, the you know the, the the you know the the aspects of let's say job search or so like the you know the te those technical mechanical things uh the, it, there's always you know a, a meeting you know the a meeting of two people like this it's not ever where well this is where it's this is, you know, where I'm coming from, and I'm telling you, right, <laughs> or anything like that. It's, uh, it's always a connection, and 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 the other thing you do is you always meet people where they are in that moment. Even if if a conversation was to be, you know, was being scheduled to talk about this, and something else is happening at this moment for for let's say myself or whoever. I think my experience is you meet the person where they're at and, and then it's that joining from that point and then you, you know, you're going forward from there. So, so yeah, that's, that's another, that's a huge thing too, which I think is, uh, is really key and, and not to be underestimated. And, and so, yeah, I, I felt that of you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, it's interesting that you would mention that because, you know, this, this, um, I always hold the intention. Uh, I, I may not always be uh, right on, but it is my intention to, to meet you, meet others where they are. And the interesting thing about that, when we talk about co-creativity, the only way, the only possible way that I can even get close to meeting someone where they are is if we have engendered mutual trust in one another and you help me to understand in fact where you are because otherwise it's completely hit and miss. So this is um, a testament to the co-creative nature of, of the, the partnership as I like to refer it, the, the kindred journeying where I love the, the image of, you know, we walk together, you know, arm in arm, we walk together and then there comes a point at which we know, we both know you're walking on and I'm, I'm totally at peace and you're at peace and you have now reached that next elevation of who you are. And you might, you might give me a knowing glance over your shoulder and I give a knowing glance back. And we know that, that there has been a beautiful natural conclusion to this phase of significant change and transition. And, oh, I have a lovely wave of emotion. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, well, well, it's such that. a lovely part of life. It's a challenging part of life. We have to go into the corners. We have to be willing to sort of lay ourselves bare in some ways so that we can access new dimensions of who we are. But it's such, it's so lovely, it's so, magical and mysterious and there's this unfolding and and so you know thank you for drawing this out today in the conversation i am i'm most grateful and i like to think that those who are able to look in on our conversation will feel similarly <clears throat> you know in conclusion as we move towards the the latter part of our conversation so you know you're a, a multi-graduate of many different you know significant changes and transitions and, and i've been blessed to be close to these chapters of your story amongst all the other chapters right this is just these chapters that I've been close to um, if you could you know this is the after part of the conversation is you know looking back on our work um, 
Could you comment on, I mean, people, I mean, generally speaking, we would like to, if we're going to engage in something like this, we would like to know it doesn't have a hard beginning and a hard stop, you know, that, that there's something lasting about it. And, and I don't mean to lead the witness here by, by suggesting that that's so. I, I rely on you as I always do for your authentic expression as it relates to this, but what is... What do you see in the rear view mirror as it relates to the times that we have come together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, for our first engagement when, you know, I, I was in that point of transition and uh, having graduated uh, with my PhD and looking for a position, uh, very much so, I had my sights on uh, academia, and mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, and and for for all the reasons you know that that all makes sense, and is exactly like you, you you mentioned earlier that I'm a lifelong learner. I am. I love learning. You know, one of my you know foundational characteristics, I guess you could say, is curiosity and and in hand in hand with that is just a love of, of learning uh, new your, things. Your and, true nature. Yes, it's my true nature. It is. It absolutely is. And and so academia was absolutely uh, it 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 I sensed it as the be all and the end all, but Ultimately, um, I was presented with opportunities within industry, and it was through the many conversations that we had, <laughs> wherein um, it really deepened my understanding of myself and both the opportunities that lie within a position in academia at a university and a position within industry, within a corporation. And I remember that you kind of introduced all of these different comparisons or parallels, the so ways that we could look at things. And ultimately, I uh, accepted a position within industry. And I found that world, I mean, brand new, completely brand new, because I'd always been in practice. Yes. And so completely different world, completely different lingo, language, acronyms. Um, yeah, whole, whole different world. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and again, I think, you know, we had conversations through that transition as well. So you were able to help me smooth into that new world. And uh, yeah, so it, it has directed my life course uh, for the last close to close to 10 years and mm -hmm. uh, and I have had opportunities within industry that I could never ever have begun to imagine. I don't think anyone could have imagined um, what I would have been doing and, uh, and and you know where I've gone and you know the many roads I've traveled and the the ideally hopefully I'd like to think the impacts on other people's lives that I've had you know that my my contributions um, that it hasn't just been work which is like work in order to get a paycheck you know in order to you know have food shelter things like that this is um, this is work that I've done that has I believe and hope has it's all been geared to making a difference um, in other people's lives and animals' lives as well, uh, ultimately. So, so yeah, where where I would have had blinders on, you know, because academia, this is all I can see. This is this is it. This is all I know, right? I've been to university three times. All I know is the university world. Um, you are able to open up the doors to possibilities that went far beyond that. And how I was able to express an industry was taking my academic mind and my academic training and applying that within industry in so many different ways, again, within opportunities that I would have never imagined to have ever opened up. So that itself has been absolutely game-changing for me for the last, like, 
close to 10 years of my life. So <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then from there with with having engaged in, um, you know, the 100 day shift, which we are calling the shift then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it, it definitely, I'm, I'm probably, you know, way out there getting close to the thousandth day. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but sort of. <laughs> uh, you know, I've come to learn so much uh, more about myself, getting closer to who I am and what I value, and more about what I would really like to continue to contribute and do in the future. And I believe that is shaping who I am, my understanding of myself, and the lens through which where I envision my next area might be to, to contribute, to share, um, to work, um, you know, to be a part of, you know, uh, you know, the, the working uh, world in that this is the role that you play in society and this is the way you contribute. So I'm in that transition right now uh, within looking for a new position and uh, in coming to know myself much more closely and with the aim to work from, you know, again, I guess you could say my truest self, pulling and drawing on the gifts that I have to offer as an individual and maximizing the potential to use those gifts. I'm using all of this to, to direct my decision as to uh, my next landing place as such and how and how I'm going to express who I'm going to be and uh, and what I'm going to be able to offer ultimately so hmm. oh, beautiful thank you Debbie that uh, that, that, that paints such a, a clear portrait of you're unfolding the journey that is to which is the heart of the work that we do together is the journey in understanding, finding faith in, and learning to trust at ever deeper levels, um, our true nature, what is, what is extraordinarily unique about us as a, as, a, as a particular individual. And I never have those answers. I only have the, this ability to, to facilitate access to these, these, these understandings and, and to be a witness to to you and 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 you know these these this unfolding these higher elevations of who you are has been you know such a an extraordinary privilege uh, you know as it is you know with with other fellow journeyers that I get to speak with and and to to share in this experience with I I am most grateful for your time today um, like like the hundred day shift come thousand day shift. Um, our, our, our 10 or 15 minute conversation this morning takes on a life of its own as well. It just, it's perfect. <laughs> it's, <laughs> and, and I guess, you know, this is, this is uh, sort of the microcosm of the macrocosm. And that is that that's the essence of the shift is that we co-create together, we guide together. Yes, there's a structure. Yes, there's a process, but it is designed to be flexible and adaptable and move with us and let this be the organic, wondrous unfolding that it is and not try to make it, not try to make it fit within a tight structure that could compromise us, that could even be, could even be suffocating and, and, and maybe take us back to our days of you know, you've, you have deadlines and, and, you know, there, there needs to be, a, you know, a general accountability, of course, and that's what we bring to the shift before we even begin as we, we hold that intention. So, Debbie, thank you so much. I could spend all day, but I'm thinking when someone comes to the site and they see an eight and a half hour video. <laughs> we could <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely could and maybe on a different occasion we will well you know we'll take a topic on and we'll we'll offer a, a really rich um uh, a rich window into a, a particular angle of all of this you know who knows that'd be amazing 
So once again, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you too, Murray. Yeah, so good to see you. Thank you. Take okay. care. <laughs>